While browsing Reddit the other day, I ran across a question in the free CAD forum about toroidal propellers. There's been a lot of interest in toroidal propellers lately, ever since a paper from MIT. The promise is that by shedding less vortices at the tips, they will be more efficient and much quieter than a conventional propeller. It was an interesting question and led to a few interesting experiments in modeling the things in FreeCAD. Interesting enough that I want to experiment with them further. First step for that is a fully parametric model that I can use to easily produce variations on the theme. A special thanks to user FalseTank27 for asking a good question at just the right time. This design is primarily done in the part workbench, but you'll also need some tools from the draft workbench and the curves workbench. If you don't have the curves workbench installed, go to Tools, Add-on Manager, and install it. If you're using a custom toolbar to make things easier, you'll need the Blend Curve tool from the curves workbench, and from the draft workbench, you'll need the clone tool and the polar array tool. So let's get started. First, we want to create a sketch on the XY plane containing just the circle centered on the origin. Let's make it a 4 mm radius. This will be the hub for our propeller. Next, we need a line to act as the first root of the blade. So we bring the circle in as external geometry and create a line from the origin to the circle. I'll make that line horizontal to fully constrain the sketch. I'm going to rename that sketch Lower Root Anchor. You'll see why it's an anchor shortly. We want to make a duplicate of that sketch to act as the other root of the blade. Go to Edit Duplicate Selection. This gives us a dialog asking which parts we want to duplicate. We don't need a copy of the hub sketch. We want both copies to use the same sketch for their external geometry. We're going to leave the line as horizontal so we can easily adjust it by rotating the entire sketch in the data pane. I'll name that sketch Upper Root Anchor. Now select the sketch and in the data pane go to the placement dot angle and set it to 120 degrees since this is going to be a three-bladed propeller. We want the lower root of the next blade to be overlapped by the upper root of this blade. Finally, we need a line to act as a scaffold for the midpoint anchor of our blade. This will start at the origin and go to the radius of the propeller. Again, we constrain the line horizontal and we will rotate the entire sketch in the data pane later. Now constrain the length of the line to 50 millimeters and name that constraint Blade Radius. Unsurprisingly, I'll name the sketch Midpoint Scaffold. So now make sure the midpoint scaffold is selected and in the data pane go to Position Angle. Since this angle should probably always be fixed at the midpoint between the roots, I'll set it with a formula. The autocomplete is flaky here, so you just have to know the correct data structure. I'll set it to upper root anchor dot placement dot rotation dot angle divided by 2. That formula is sufficient since we'll always leave the lower root anchor's angle at 0 degrees. Now we need to create a midpoint anchor. So start a new sketch and create a line on the x-axis horizontally centered on the origin. As you can see, when we center it on the origin, we get a warning about a redundant constraint. Not a problem, just select that constraint and hit delete. Now set the length of the line to 4 millimeters. For reasons you'll see later, it's convenient to have the length be an even number. I'll rename the sketch Midpoint Anchor. Now we need to attach the sketch to the scaffold, so we come down to the data pane, and under Attachment, we select Map Mode and then click the button to bring up a dialog. When the dialog comes up, it's already selecting the first reference. So just click on the Midpoint Scaffold. Now it moves automatically to selecting the second reference, and the mode is normal to edge. So now we select the vertex at the end of the scaffold line in order to move the attachment into place. As you can see, this results in a warning about the attachment mode not working because it's moved to plane by three points. We reselect normal to edge and the message turns green, indicating we have a successful attachment. So OK that. Now to give a better point of reference, let's go ahead and extrude the hub. Select the sketch with the circle. 
and I'll give it a height of 4 millimeters and check the symmetric box as well. A useful rule of thumb for CAD is that whenever you can make something symmetric, you probably should, since it'll make your life a whole lot easier later on. Now I'll rename the extrusion to Hub. Now we need to create another sketch to be the profile of the blade. Since this will be a master sketch, we just need to drop it on the XY plane centered on the origin, and we'll clone it and map the clones into place later. Let's start with an arc in three points and put the endpoints on the X axis. The exact radius doesn't matter, we'll be setting that a little later. Center the arc on the origin. Remove the redundant constraint as usual and now we'll set a horizontal length, let's say 4 millimeters for now. Now since it just got a lot smaller, we'll zoom back in so we can see what we're doing. Create a second arc and make its endpoints coincident with the first arc. Make its curvature opposite to the first arc. Again, the exact radius doesn't matter. Normally, we would use radius to complete the definition of an arc, but in this case, I'd really rather control the thickness of the blade profile. So we need to drop a couple of construction points, one on the upper arc and one on the lower, each coincident with its respective arc. Also make them coincident with the y-axis. Now we can set the distance between those construction points to 0 0.5 millimeters, and because we want the blade to be symmetrical, we'll also mark those construction points as symmetrical with the origin. As expected, this leaves us a redundant constraint to delete. Now we'll just neaten up the callouts a little bit and close the sketch. I'll rename it to Blade Profile. Now to set up the profiles. Select the Blade Profile sketch and then the Draft Clone tool. We'll rename the clone to Lower Blade Profile. Now select the Lower Blade Profile and in the data pane, go to Mapping and click the button to get the mapping dialog. Select the lower blade anchor as the first reference. It's going to be a little hard to select the vertex with the circle in the way, so click over to Model, hide the sketch for the hub, and click Back to Task. Now we can easily select the vertex of the line to be our second reference point. We need to select Normal to Edge as the mapping mode. As you can see, the clone has now been moved into position. Repeat the procedure for the upper blade profile with the upper blade anchor. Finally, for the middle blade profile, make it one more clone. Name it to mid blade profile and pull up the mapping dialog. The primary reference will be the mid anchor. Now hide the mid anchor line and make our second point of reference the vertex of the middle scaffold. I've used draft clones for this so that any change made to the profile sketch will be reflected everywhere it's needed. Now we need to put everything in the correct orientation. Select the mid blade profile and go to the data pane attachment angle and set it to 90 degrees. Now I'll make the hub visible just to make things a little easier to visualize and select the lower blade profile. Set its attachment angle to 15 degrees. We can always change this later if we want. Select the upper blade profile and make the same change. Alternatively, you can set the angle of the upper blade profile using the formula Lower Blade Profile Position Rotation Angle. Note that sometimes when doing things like this, one of the profiles may end up with its mapping reversed. In that case, you'll need to use the negative angle in order to get it to rotate in the same direction as the other profile. Now with the skeleton laid out, it's time to start working on the actual path of the blades. Select the lower root anchor and control select the mid anchor. Now click the blend curve tool from the curves workbench. I'll rename the curve to lower blade curve. Now the same thing with the upper blade anchor and the midpoint anchor. 
I'll name this one upper blade curve. We have the curves, but they obviously need adjustment. First, for both curves, set the parameter 1 to 0. This will make the attachment point on the root lines at the origin. As you can see, when I set the parameter for the upper blade curve, for some reason there's a bit of a display anomaly. There's nothing wrong with the curve itself, it's just a little bug in the rendering. As you can see, when it actually recomputes, everything is fine. Now we'll set parameter 2 on each of the curves to 2, that is 2 millimeters from the attached endpoint. The advantage of centering the anchor line and assigning it an even length is that no matter which end of the anchor FreeCAD has decided to attach to, it'll end up in the center, and the math is easy. Just to make sure, we can hide the midpoint anchor for a moment and we can see that the two blend curves do meet up neatly in the middle. Now we can set the magnitude of both scaling factors of both curves to 2. Be sure to keep the existing sign of each scaling factor, otherwise the curve will try to go in the other direction. At last we're ready to make this actually look like a propeller. Click the Sweep tool. In the dialog, double-click the lower blade profile and the mid-blade profile to indicate what we want to sweep from and to. Now press the Sweep Path button. Select the curve from the lower anchor to the midpoint anchor. You must click on the curve itself, not on an item in the model display. Now click Done. Since we want to create a solid rather than just a shell, check this Create Solid checkbox. OK that and we have part of our blade. I'll rename that sweep to Lower Blade. Now we click the Sweep tool again, this time selecting the upper root profile and the mid profile. For the sweep path, select the upper curve. Once again, check the Create Solid checkbox and OK that. I'll rename the second sweep to Upper Blade. Now I'll make the hub visible again just so we can better visualize what we're going to end up with. As a design note here, in my first take on this, I did not use a midpoint profile, but instead selected both of the curves and used the Join Curve tool. Then I did the sweep directly from the lower root profile to the upper root profile. That looked visually not bad, but on closer inspection it did not produce the full half twist in the blade necessary for producing the correct design. By splitting the sweeps at the midpoint with the profile, it gets FreeCAD to add the half twist so that both leading edges of the blade are turned in the correct direction. It's looking pretty good, but we want the lower blade to actually be lower and the upper blade to actually be upper. So go to the lower blade anchor attachment Z and set it to negative 1 millimeter. Now set the upper blade anchor Z to 1 millimeter. Looking at the model, we can see that the hub is tall enough to support this even with the angle of attack of the blades. If it wasn't, we could always increase the height of the hub. Now we select the upper blade and the lower blade and fuse them together. I'll rename the fusion Blade. Now select the blade and select the Polar Array tool from the draft workbench. Set the count to 3 to give us our three-bladed propeller. The draft plane is starting to get annoying, so I'll briefly go into the draft workbench, turn off the grid, and go back to the part workbench. The blades look a little bit more rounded than I would like. Open up the array, open up the blade, and select the curves and change the scaling factors to 1 on both the upper and the lower blade. Again, make sure to keep the signs on the scale factors. That looks better, just in time for St. Patrick's Day. Watch this space for a follow-up video where we'll look at variations on the theme and perhaps bringing all of the parameters into a spreadsheet for convenient modification. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.